Welcome to Art Bites at the Mariana Kistler Beach Museum of Art. I'm Catherine Slodzik. I'm the Associate Curator of Education. And today I'd like to share a screen print with you by artist Harrison Begay. Um, and it is a screen print of a small fawn. Dine Navajo artist Haske Yanaya, or Wandering Boy, was born in Greasewood, White Cone, Arizona. He grew up in a Hogan on the Navajo reservation where he helped his family tend goats and sheep. He was born in 1917, but was not sure of the date. His parents didn't have a calendar, so he chose November 15th. Many of his works reflect his childhood growing up on the reservation. Here you can see some prints showing children herding goats and sheep and the traditional style of Navajo weaving. Like many Native American children of his time, he was sent away to school. In 1917, he went to Fort Wingate, New Mexico, and he ran away and actually stayed home, spending several years in the hospital with tuberculosis, a point in time where he started doing some drawing. He then went to Fort Defiance Indian School, and later to Hatchie Indian School, both in New Mexico. In 1934, after seeing Pueblo ceremonial paintings by New Mexico artist Fred Cabote, who was a Hopi, he entered the Santa Fe Indian School to study art. The studio school was taught by Dorothy Dunn, and he was actually one of the star students in the class salutatorian of the fifth class. Dunn had established the studio school in 1932, and the painting program for Native American children encouraged them to develop a painting style that was derived from their cultural traditions. Many of her students, including Begay, went on to paint murals and posters for the WPA during the 1930s. Dunn believed that her students had an innate artistic ability, a belief that was widely promoted by another Native American art teacher, Angel DeCora, who was Ho-Chunk, at the beginning of the 20th century. Dunn only taught the most basic fundamentals of painting and did not teach life drawing, perspective, or color theory. She's promoted this single style of painting that was influenced by the work of the San Ildefonso Pueblo painters of the 1910s and 20s. A style that she believed rightly or wrongly was the only authentic painting style for Native American to follow. It was called the studio style or flat style and when you begin to look at it, you can see um, influences from Pueblo murals and pottery painting, from the Plains Hyde paintings, rock art, and things like that. And then the topic matter was specifically drawn from everyday life, ceremonies, dance, mythology, and would reflect whichever tribe the student belonged to. In 1940 to 41, Begay attended the Black Mountain College in North Carolina and later Phoenix College. Um, as I mentioned, he was a WPA artist, and then during World War II, he served with many other Navajos in the U.S. Army Signal Corps. He was stationed in Iceland and then later stormed the beach at Normandy during World War II. Um, interestingly, after the war, Begay stopped painting warriors. He was just no longer interested in that subject. He returned briefly to Santa Fe um, after his discharge, spent a little bit of time in Arizona, and then ended up in Denver for about six months at a radio technician school, but also working in a borrowed studio. And you can see in the bottom right corner, a photograph from the Denver Post who ran an article on him in 1947. In 1951, Begay co-founded Tua Enterprises in Santa Fe. This was a printing company that worked with Native American artists to share their work with a wider audience. For Begay, the screen print pro process really worked well for his artwork. Um, using eight to 15 colors, the silk screens looked very similar to the gouache paintings in the style that he had learned at the studio school. For all of these artists, um, Indian artists, the prints were done in editions of 2000, which were then purchased by tourists and really spread sort of a love and fame for Native American art. Begay moved back to the Navajo reservation in 1959 after the death of a friend. 
Um, he illustrated two children's books, which we can see here, The Little Indian Basket Maker and A Hogan for Bluebird. And then also a, a book called The Sacred Mountains of the Navajo, um, which were four paintings with some commentary. During his later career, he began to create more complicated works that reflected mythology. And one of the things that you often see is the guardian rainbow, yay, in his work. In 1997, in addition to many other awards, Begay was named an Arizona Indian living treasure. Begay was 95 when he passed away and he is buried in the Fort Defiance Veterans Cemetery in Arizona. Begay placed a special emphasis on animals in his work, especially the deer or the beach. His father had adopted the Zuni deer clan. Traditionally, Diné tribes would sing to the deer to call them. The traditional deer dance can be seen in Arizona and at some of the New Mexico pueblos during the Lenten season. During the traditional song and dance, um, the hunter as a blackbird would sing to ask the spirit of the deer to cooperate in the hunting expedition. Ethnomusicologist Natalie Curtis recorded the song and dance in 1907. Begay's softened colors and fine lines suited the subject matter of the deer. And in Begay's words, he liked to paint anything like the deer that sells. As we take a final look at Begay's fawn, notice the flat style, the delicate details of the brush, and the choice of the soft colors. His teacher, Dorothy Dunn, said of his work, at once decorative and lifelike, his color clear in hue and even in value, his figures placid yet inwardly animated, he seemed to be inexhaustibly resourceful in a quiet, reticent way. Thank you so much for joining us, and we hope you enjoy this deer, and we'll come back and um, participate in other Art Bites with us.